Um, I have sort of a three part question. Um, the, sorry to bring us back to modernism. Uh, my, my, my first part of the question is, do you think modernism, modernism is inevitable? Um, and the second part, you sort of already touched on when you talked about beauty, and you also talked a little bit more, I feel, on the criticism and detriments of modernism, but I would like you to talk more about the, what you think is productive uh, about, uh, within it. And the third part of the question is, what do you think is coming next if we continue the way we're headed? <laughs> And get me in, in like apocalyptic mode here. It's not great. It's not good for you. <laughs> All right. So, yes, I do think modernism is inevitable. I think the best way to understand um, it, it, it's always there. So the thing that's the problem is like it's a fractal pattern. So what modernism is has always been there. Let's say, but as a spice or as a as an excess or as a as a as a movement towards something which is a little too much so that's how i think that that's kind of how tradition works so if you so like uh and it and there's been there's cycles like that so for example if you listen to 13th century you know high music in france i mean it is crazy it is wild it is wild it it's like the mathematical patterns are extremely complex you know there's like there's rhythmic they're like different rhythms and so and when you listen to it you know it's almost like it's so difficult to listen to because you have you have, you have like text, you have someone singing melodies and then other people singing and there seems to be no relation, but there's like this strange mathematical relationship between the different voices. And it's like, but then that it's like, it. so what I mean is that these things happen and then and at some point it, it kind of, let's say it, it breaks and then it feeds into a more, a more embodied world. And it's always kind of there. There's there's going to be a little bit of that experimentation. I always kind of think of, um, you know, if you look at uh, church architecture again, like Middle Age church, church church architecture. So you'd have the saints, and you'd have you know the biblical images, and then in the fringes, in the margins, then you'd have all the crazy stuff. Like you'd have you'd have like lewd images, and you know monsters and things eating their own tails, and and like just all this kind of there's kind of experimental space which was held in the margin. And so the same with manuscripts, for example. So you had the main image in the center, and then you had an experimental space in the border where you would, you could go, you could go wild, like do any, do all, all whatever it is, like, you know, knights fighting snails or uh, scatological imagery, all kinds of, of stuff that is, that is usually not explored in everyday life. So I think that what modernism did is it basically took that and just like, put it out there it's like that's what the world is about now it's about it's kind of about the extremes um and so in some ways i do think that in big cycles we'll we'll come to moments where these extremes will manifest themselves um so you know we saw that we saw the same happening in the late roman empire for example you know or like let's say the 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 late Roman Republic and early Roman, like at, at that transition, there were some really wild things. Like there were mosaics that made, um, they would make mosaics of crumbs. And so they, they would make like a mosaic where it looked like someone had eaten the day before and had left crumbs on the table. And like, that was their decorative element. Uh, and so they would they would have like images of yeah like decomposed things and there was this 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 experimental space that was opening up that was becoming really uh, really intense um, and I I think that you could even argue that Ovid's Metamorphosis is a very modern text you know uh, and that's why Augustus hated it so much it's like it's like he hated Ovid. He's like just talking about sex all the time and then talking about. So it's like you, these moments have happened before, you know. So I think so. So what is its use? So one of the things that that it does is that it does it exposes the pattern in some ways, because you could say that in a normal traditional world, um, things are just natural. Like people don't necessarily think about these these questions. They just live them. Right? It's like animals, like animals don't ask themselves about the patterns that they that they inhabit. But when things start to go awry and things kind of start to, to, to go into extremes where you actually see extremely 
extremely like de difficult uh, obtuse patterns up here, and then you kind of see idiosyncrasy down here. You're like, oh wait a minute, like you can you can kind of see what's going on, uh, and I think that that seeing can then be fed back into a more embodied world. And so that sounds abstract what I'm saying, but so I I do believe that I do believe that let's say the future will be an integration between embodied, you know, kind of incarnate art with enough understanding about what modernism proposed to be able to integrate it in a way that doesn't call attention to itself completely. And so a, a good example, if you're interested, there's a there's an iconographer, his name is um, Father Siluan Justiniano. I think he's one of the best icon painters in America. Um, he was an abstract postmodern kind of postmodern abstract painter in the 90s and you know he had all these scholarships in new york he was he was doing great like he was he was on that on that um path and then he became a monk um so he began pa painting icons and what he's been doing is integrating let's say extremely um sophisticated color field theory and let's say the principles that were developed by the abstract expressionists into his painting and so the way in which, like in the 70s, the, the theories about color like that they came up with were crazy about, you know, they went really deep into, so they would make these paintings that no one could ever care about, right? Just a bunch of squares, like a bunch of squares of color. But it was the, the theory that went behind it was an extremely sophisticated understanding of color relationships and vibration and how colors affect each other. And so it's like, you can take that and put it back into something great. You can think the same about literature. It's like the modern writers, if you think of Beckett or you think of Joyce, you know, their 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 deep understanding, for example, of both like pattern and abstraction and and also of idiosyncrasy at the same time, like that kind of relationship, that, that extreme relationship they're able to to create can feed back, I think, into 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 the modern world. So if you want a good example of that, if I don't know if you know. There's an there's a author, his name is Paul Kingsnorth, and and he does that. Like, he he writes something like Beckett meets Tolkien. I mean, it's crazy. He wrote a novel called Beast. It's like, it's an astounding novel. But he he actually grammatically, he actually trans, he actually changes the grammar of the words as he's, so his character as he's losing his mind, like, the, gramma, the, the grammar of the, the, the sentences starts to break down in the story. So he uses modern tropes of actually playing with grammar and playing with punctuation. And this is like really avant-garde stuff, but he's ultimately telling a story that follows the, 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 the mythological pattern. So, um, so I think there are ways to do it. I don't know in music, I'm afraid. I don't know enough about music. That'll be you guys. People point to Arvo Parrot a bit. Like I know people point to Arvo Parrot as a possible solution to the conundrum as someone who is integrating you know, avant-garde into a more kind of embodied and and uh, and celebratory uh, music. So.